What's going on guys, Killer6, and today I'm bringing you the first episode in the Borderlands 2 Legendary Lootpedia Guide, and we're going to start things off going map by map in order that you would see them during your playthrough of Borderlands 2. So starting off, we got Windshear Waste, where you start at Claptrap's place, and we're just going to run over here to where you will find our good friend Knuckle Dragger. That's the very first boss you meet in the game. So we're going to run over there and kill him, and then we're going to see if we can get the drop. We didn't get it on the first run, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to run up here, and we're going to trigger the door to the southern shelf and come back in through that door and that will allow us to save and quit farm from this door every single time making this a much faster run go back out through the door and once we save and quit we'll be able to farm from here every time okay run 24 oh we got it the Hornet has a 10% drop chance from Knuckle Dragger. That did take me 24 runs to get it this particular time. I've gotten it plenty of times on my first run before. This thing can also drop at a 1.95% drop chance from Hyperius, but there is no way in hell anybody wants to do that farm for this. Definitely farm those from Knuckle Dragger. On to Southern Shelf. All right, starting from your Southern Shelf Liarsburg fast travel station, you're actually going to want to do your first farm over to the Southern Shelf Bay, and that's where we're going to find find Midge Mong. So let's head over there. In order to actually farm Midge Mong, you have to do the symbiosis quest that's given to you by Hammerlock. So make sure you do that first before you do this mission. Otherwise, you won't even be able to go over to the Southern Shelf Bay. Now to get to Midge Mong, you need to go all the way to the end of this area here, go up these sets of stairs, past another set of stairs, and you're going to go around this sign that says Bazaar. And you can either take this ladder or there's a ramp on the other side either way. Then Midge Mong comes out of the door up there. Sometimes he'll just pop up down here in front of you. Like he did right there. We get the kill on him and we did not get the drop. Now, uh, Midge Mong also has this super duper little badass midget on him. But uh, that guy can't drop anything. But this is the door that they normally come out of. So if you get to this door and they pop out, you can kill them right here in front of it. And then always make sure you grab yourself some more ammo if you need it. So we didn't get it on that run. Let's save and quit. Now, if you are proficient with rocket jumping or grenade jumping, you can also come over to this uh, the save station right here and then just throw down a grenade at your feet. I'm going to show you guys how to do this real quick. In case you guys have never done this before, just take your grenade mod off so that you have nothing in your grenade slot. Throw a grenade at your feet. Wait till it bounces a second time. Jump and then that will launch you up so you can bypass having to run all the way over there and as you can see there's midge mong let's go ahead and murder him and no drop on run number two we keep on trying all right, and we actually got it on run number four. That was actually fairly quick for this. So the Kerblaster has three different drop sources. It can also world drop. This thing drops at a 10% drop chance from Midge Mong. It can also drop from the Handsome Sorcerer at a 0.3% chance, but only during the story mode completion. And then it can also spawn in Torque Vending Machines, which is the easiest place to get it. It will spawn fairly regularly in those machines. Like I said, this thing can also world drop, so you can find it from Loot Midgets, Chest, etc., etc. All right, up next, again, starting from our Southern Shelf Lyersburg location, we're going to go find Boom Boom. And to get to Boom Boom, it's the same way you'd get to them during the normal story mission. You're just going to go down the hill like you did with Claptrap, and you're going to go into Boom Boom's camp, which you can actually see from right here. Now, both Boom and Boom are weak to corrosive. They both have armor bars instead of regular health bars. So we're going to use our corrosive top knee on these guys. Speed this thing up, except he just jumped away. All right, nothing from the first one. The other guy pops up in the turret first. Once you blast the turret, he jumps out, and then you can get him there. And oh, we got the drop actually right there on the first run. Lobbed bonus package. The bonus package has a 10% chance to drop from both Boom and Boom, the two brothers. So you can essentially get two per run if you lock out. You can also get this from the Torg vending machines in the Campaign of Carnage DLC as well. All right, continuing from this location, we're actually just going to run up the hill and we're going to go fight our good friend, Captain Flint. Now, it is quite the run to get to Captain Flint. So there is a shortcut. You can grenade jump off of this thing, get on this ledge, go up that way and go around. But I'm going to show you guys the uh, the direct path instead because most people aren't going to want to try and grenade jump that every time while getting shot by a bunch of guys. But it is considerably faster if you can master the art of grenade jumping, just so you know. Otherwise, you have to wait for this door to open every time too, which is a pain in the butt. Unless you grenade jump over this door. Now from here, you can actually kind of shortcut this way. Just jump on this ledge, go around here. 
and you're just going to need to go up this pathway over here. Now there is a red chest down there as well in case you are wanting to farm those as you go. Okay, now after going up these stairs, you can continue going around the pathway like you normally would to get up to Flint. Or you can jump on this box, jump on this box, jump on this sign, jump across to this chain area, walk up the chain, and jump onto this ledge and over the rail. And that now saved you some time and put you considerably closer to Flint. Now, unfortunately, like a lot of farms in Borderlands 2, you are going to have to run this every single time to do this farm. So it's not super ideal. That said, you can also get this guy's drop, which is the Thunderball Fist. You can get it elsewhere in the game. Oh, I believe we got it on the first run, guys. This is insane. We've had some really good first run luck today. Of course, we might die here because all the enemies are far away. Wait. Oh, there was a red dot behind me. It fooled me. All right, you. Help me out. There we go. And there you go. We got the Thunderball Fist. Now, the Thunderball Fist does drop at a 5% drop chance from Flint. So we got extremely lucky to get this on the very first run because this is a long run to get to him. It can also drop from Sparky Flint on Wham Bam Island. So if you do the Son of Crawl Marax Headhunter Pack, you can also get it there at a 5% chance. It can also world drop. So keep that in mind. So now we move on to Three Horns Divide. All right, on Three Horns Divide, if you come to this save station right here, the normal Three Horns Divide, and you see some red dots appear on your map just while you're standing at the station, then that means our good friend friend Savage Lee has spawned in back here and Savage Lee is who we're after. Now Savage Lee can drop the unkempt Herald, one of the most sought after guns in Borderlands history and we did not get it from him on the first run. Now don't despair if you don't get it from me right behind that fast travel station because he does spawn again elsewhere on the map. So there's a couple different things you can do here. Number one you can just farm from these two areas because he can spawn in this gap over here or he can also spawn in this gap over here. Now you'll see the red dots appear on the map on either of those spots if you do get him to spawn here. However, his normal spawning spot is actually a little bit further away. So you could sit right here and just farm him from that spot over and over. If he doesn't spawn, you just save quit. But his dedicated spawn source, where he's going to spawn every single time, is over here. If you get lucky and you get him to spawn in that first source, that's not going to be the only place you can get him. He will actually spawn again over here. Makes no sense whatsoever, but that's okay. We don't think about these things. So then if you come to this spot on the map right about here, this is where you will find Savage Lee again. And no drop for us on the first run. Now there is one thing that you can do to speed up this farm. You can actually go out the door to Frostburn Canyon and come back in and then grab a vehicle and drive over here. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that real quick. All you got to do is just take your car and you're going to go across this bridge. I'm an excellent driver. Don't worry about it. And you're just going to go through this camp as if you're going into the next zone. All right, so after you go to Frostburn Canyon, all you got to do is just go right back out the door and you will save at that spot. All right, so after you save and quit and come back out the door, that's when you can go over here and grab your vehicle. You just want to take this path that I take so you can dodge most of these enemies. Grab whatever vehicle, doesn't matter, and you're just going to go across the bridge real quick and run into a pole. That's part of, that's kind of part of the farm. Don't, okay, yeah. And then you do a little, a little spin. This, it's all just for good luck, you know? That's all. And then from here, you're just going to go into that same camp and kill savagely until he gives you the drop. Now, again, you can just start from that fast travel station that I showed you earlier. And that way you have a chance at two every single time. But you do have to do a little bit of extra driving. So keep that in mind. It's your choice on how you want to do it. Except here's the thing. This one's guaranteed to spawn here every single time. The other one you might not see like for 20 runs or so. So you have to decide what is ultimately going to be faster for you. Oh, and we got it. Nice. That was actually only our third run of this Savage Lee and our fourth overall Savage Lee kill. So that's actually a pretty fast drop for that. So the Unkempt Herald has a 10% chance to drop from Savage Lee. It can also drop from the Torg vending machines at a much higher chance if you want to get it from there. All right, on to our next farm. All right, so starting from the Three Horns Divide save station yet again, we're actually going to do the In Memoriam quest line given to us from Lilith and Sanctuary. And once you complete that quest line, you will be able to spawn in Bowl. Now to get to him, this is where you want to head to right here you'll see his little beware sign and looking at the mini map i will show you that is right here on your map he has like this little camp area right in this zone so that way you can find it it's going to be from here you just go around the road and boom right in this area here 
All right, no luck on run number one. Bull is notoriously stingy for me. I don't know what his deal is, but for me, he does not like to drop the fastball. Now, one thing that you can do is while you're farming the Unkempt Herald, you can also combo farm for the fastball. So you can be looking for the red dots to spawn in here at the beginning of this part. That way, you know, if you have a Savage Lee there, if you don't, no big deal. You're coming over here to fight Bull anyhow, but you can combo the farm that way just by looking for the Savage Lee spawns back there. All right, look at that. Run number two, we actually got an explosive fastball. Not bad. Now, the fastball does have a 10% chance to drop from Bowl, who, like I said, is normally pretty stingy for me, but I got this on the second run, so no complaints for me on this one. This thing can also world drop, so you can find it from chest and all that good stuff, just like the Unkempt Herald and a lot of the other items you're going to find on this list. All right, up next, we have Three Horns Valley. There is only one drop on this map, and it's going to be from a guy right in this little cave over here. Now, there's a couple different ways to get into that cave number one you can drive a car around and go around the back there there is an entrance at the back that you can go into it's a very obvious entrance you can actually see it from the other door that leads into this area but i'm going to show you guys the fastest way to get up to him now you do need to complete the medical mystery quest and what you want to do is you want to come to the edge of this geyser and it just launches you straight up here and then he will spawn right here And no drop on run number one, so we will try that again. Now, like I said, there is a door all the way back at the other area, and you can run through, and you have to go past a bunch of lunatics to get to him. So definitely a much better farm if you take that geyser right there that you just now saw erupt. It's right beside the road. I'll show you guys real quick where you need to stand. Basically, you need to stand so that you're right at the front edge of this geyser. Now, if these uh, skags see you first, then you're going to have problems. So you want to get over and get to this geyser quick so you can get launched up over there. So let's try again. We go right to the front edge of this thing. It's going to launch us. And as it launches you, go ahead and start pushing forward so that you can make it to this cliff edge right here. Now, from here, you're just going to jump up on here, jump up over here, and you're just going to wail on Doc Mercy and hopefully get the drop. And we are over two. You can also occasionally get some tubby skags over here. So keep your eyes peeled for those they can drop you some pearlescence. All right, and we got the drop on run number 17. That took a little bit, but here it is, the Infinity Pistol. This thing can drop at a 10% drop chance from Doc Mercy. It can also drop from Chubby or Tubby Bones enemies in the Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep at a 10% drop chance. It can also drop from the Digistruck Peak Doc Mercy at a 10% drop chance. It has a 1.95% drop chance to drop from the Golden Golem, which is not really the best way to go about getting that. Or it can drop from Lieutenant Angvar in the Commander Lil's DLC at its highest drop chance at 12.5%. And like a lot of the other items that we're going to cover, this one can world drop as well, meaning you can get it from chests or random enemies. All right, up next, let's go to Frostburn Canyon. There's quite a few drops to get on this map. Okay, starting from the Frostburn Canyon fast travel station, there is a few different ways to go. And this map can be very confusing because there's layers to it. And unlike the Borderlands 3 map, we don't have like a 3D view. So it can get a little bit complicated. You can sort of see the overlaps of different areas here, but I'll try to do my best to explain where we're going. So first thing we're going to go after is the last go now this is something you can get right off the bat when you first come to frostburn canyon so you're just going to follow the path that i'm taking here you're going to go down this way and you're going to go into the caves on the right down here and we're just going to look for a puddle where you can actually pick up this gun for free now if you want you can actually make the puddle spawn multiple copies of this gun just by going in and out of the frostburn canyon door right at the beginning of the map if you feel so inclined so we're going to head in through here we're going to pass all the enemies up and we're just going to head toward this little body of water right here. We're going to follow it around this pathway. Now, when you come out to the other side of the puddle, you're going to go up this little hill. And over here on your right, there is going to be a body of water that's separate from all the others. And inside that, you will always find a last go. Whether you're on normal mode, true water mode, ultimate mode, OP levels, it doesn't matter. This thing will always spawn from that puddle. So it is a 100% drop chance. And this is the only place in the entire game that you can get this thing. All right, up next, if we continue along that same path, we're going to come around the corner up here. And we're going to find our good friend Scorch, who can drop one of the classics from Borderlands history, the Hellfire. Now, in order to get Scorch to spawn, you do need to do the cult following false idol 
Idols mission, or you can get Scorch again in the raid on Digital Shark Peak as well. Now, once you've done that mission, Scorch will respawn over here in the same location, which would be right here on your map. See, right here on the map, if you start from the beginning area, you could loop around this way and get to it, or you can follow the cave route that I took where you pass the last go and get to it. Either way, fairly close in time consumption to get there, but taking the left-hand route is actually a little bit quicker. All right, no drop on the first run of Scorch, so we will save and quit and try again. Now, one thing to look out for while you're farming Scorch is you want to look for tubby enemies as well, because these spider ants can be tubby versions, and you can get some sick loot from those guys too. Keep your eyes peeled out for those. All right, no drop on run number two. And there you go, look there, there's a tubby spider ant right here in front of Scorch. And he dropped us a border class mod. And on lucky run 13, we got an impetuous hellfire. Now the hellfire can drop at a 10% drop chance from Scorch. It can also drop from the Digistruct Peak Scorch, which would be the OP level Scorch at a 10% drop chance as well. And it can also drop at a 10% drop chance from Solly the Blacksmith in the Hallowed Hollow area on the Halloween DLC as well. Now from that same spot where we just now fought Scorch, if you go around the corner, there is this little area here that has these platforms and stairs. And this is where you will fight our next guy, Spyco. Now, in order to fight Spyco, you will need to do Monster Mash Part 3. Now, in order to get Monster Mash Part 3, you have to be pretty far along in the story. So it's gonna be a little while before you can farm this guy. If you're just at the beginning of the game, you're not gonna be able to farm him right off the bat. Now, he can drop the Neogenator, which is a pretty decent shield. It's a shield that allows you to adapt to enemy damage so it's a pretty decent piece of gear but nothing on the first try so we will try try again this is where you can find him on the map which is like right here at the top most area now to get to him the easiest way you're going to do the same thing that i just showed you you're going to start from your fast travel station for frostburn canyon you're going to hang a hard left come all the way around to where you will pass a uh, scorch so then you go through this way and then you got to take these stairs up to this area. It's not really a fast farm. You're going to have to do a lot of running, but do be on the lookout for tubby enemies up here again. All right, on run number seven, we actually got the drop finally. So this is the Neogenator. This thing has the ability to get up to 86% elemental resistance, which basically makes it like a elemental sham. It can take a lot of elements and just resist it for you, which is pretty nice. It does also boost your max health. So this is basically what we would call an adaptive type shield. It's actually a really good all around just general purpose shield. Has a very fast recharge delay as well. Now this thing can world drop. It can also drop from Spyco at a 10% drop chance or Sully the Blacksmith in the aforementioned Haunted Hallow DLC at a 10% drop chance as well. All right, for our final enemy, it's Incinerator Clayton, who you will first meet over here where he has a mission for you after you complete those series of missions, the cult following missions. The final mission is the cult following the enkindling. After that, Clayton will respawn in the same location every time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that same path as if we we're going toward the last go that we ran to earlier, and we're going to take a right instead of going left this time so instead of following that waterway down there we're actually going to hang a hard right and go up this way now along the way if you pop open these chests you do have a chance to get loot midgets spawning from them you can also find tubby spider ants through here as well if you hug this wall you can take a little bit of a shortcut up the stairs so you don't have to go around all that and end up fighting those guys too you can run past most of the enemies on this map to go get to clayton to speed this farm up a bit you can also go into this little encampment over here and get quite a bit of spider ants to spawn and there's there's also a couple of chests in there where you could potentially get some loot midgets. So if you want to like add some bonus kind of things to your farm to make it feel a little more worthwhile, then make sure you pop open these chests and look for loot midgets and also look for tubby spider ants over here. Now there's also a chest up there, a red chest that you can parkour up to by going off of this platform, off of that, up onto this rail, into that rail, and then get up there if you want to go after that. Incinerator Clayton will spawn right here every time after you do that mission the first time. And there he is. He has actually ran around a little bit on me. And nothing on the first run. This is the location on your map in case you're looking for it. Again, you would start from here. You would go around. And instead of going this way, you're going to take this path this time. I know, again, this map can be a little bit confusing with the little underpass, overpass kind of things here. But he is in this area over here. You'll also recognize this area as the place that you have to run to before you go over there and meet Lilith for the first time during the story. All right, so we didn't get the drop. So let's save and quit and come back over again. And on run number 19, we have a 
tubby enemy running around out here, so might as well kill him. And we got a psycho class mod of some sort, legendary reaper. Oh, there you go. Loot midget from a chest. We got nothing from him but money, but you can see that they definitely can spawn from the chest in this area. Finally, on run 27, he drops it to the Pyrophobia. Oh boy, that one took a while. <laughs> that was definitely the longest farm we've done so far. We started off kind of weak with the Hornet for that farm too. Now again, you do need to do the cult following quest line, which you can get from Lilith. This thing has a 33% chance to drop from Clark the Combustible, which is not who we just now farmed. It has a 10% chance to drop from Incinerator Clayton. Now Clark the Combustible, you can find in the Halloween DLC. It can also drop at a 0.29% drop chance from Hyperius. I have had this drop from Hyperius and it is the biggest troll on earth because you think you got a Nor fleet, which is already a low percent from Hyperius and instead you end up getting this thing. And it is heartbreaking when that happens, let me tell you. Okay, that'll do it for the very first episode of the Legendary Lootpedia for Borderlands 2. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more and I will be back with another episode soon. Thank you guys for watching. Take care.